Good morning, everyone. Chodesh Tov. We have a good month this month. And the month of Av, that God should transform it from misery and mourning to joy and uh, happiness. The month that the temple was destroyed and the month that the temple will be rebuilt. <clears throat> and this is the now we're beginning a new book of the Torah also, the fifth book of the Torah, book of Dvorim, or as it's called in English, Deuteronomy. It's Deuteronomy because it's, the, it's also called Mishnah Torah. This is Moses repeated the whole Torah before he, the Jews entered the land of Israel and without Moses. <clears throat> and he told the Jewish people in this book, of uh, disastrous things that were going to happen if they did not do the Torah. And that's in Parshish Kitabo, you see. And, um, but on the other hand, the promise is that God will never, ever abandon the Jewish people. Never even considered it. That's why he punished them so much, because he can't let them go. And he really wants them to improve. And he'll do anything that he can in order to make it happen. So, and pretty much he did. But in the end, it's going to be good. And that's what the this week's half tour is about. These three weeks are three weeks of, of uh, how do you say, God's retribution. And each one of the half Torahs that we read after the reading of the Torah, so we read a small portion, in this case, of the prophets. And the first two weeks we read from Jeremiah, the first and the second chapter of Jeremiah where he tire, gives these dire warnings and these awesome, terrible threats and always ends up by saying that, you know, Jewish people are just waiting for you to come back to me and start doing the Torah and the commandments again and I'll rebuild the temple and all the Jews will be gathered back to the land of Israel and with tremendous rejoicing and all the world will say that uh, the Jewish people are special. <clears throat> and this week's Torah, Haftorah, this is the third. Ends by saying, Tzion The Jewish people, no matter what, no matter where they are, no matter what they've done, that God is giving this promise that Tzion, Tzion means the Jewish people. It can mean the Jewish people, it can mean, it can mean the, the, the land of Israel, it can be Jerusalem, Tzion, even the Holy Temple. In any case, Tzion means the Jewish people. In this case, Tzion, the Jewish people, but Mishpat, <coughs> With, I say the, the the law, to Padeh will be redeemed, re, released. They say they'll be redeemed. They'll be brought back to the land of Israel. The Shavah, and Shavah means two different things. But let's say Shavah, those who are in prison, the ones that are taken into Shevi, but Tzedakah with charity. So generally speaking, the Jewish people, what is going to get the Jewish people out of this terrible quagmire that they're in, which is called exile, that we've been in for like 2,000 years already, and we lost our identity, and we lost our minds, and we lost our, our sense of balance and, and our, our goals and our <clears throat> navigating without any compass. So it says, how are we going to get out of this? See on the Jewish people, how are they going to be redeemed? The Mishpat, that's the Torah. Torah means the law. The Shavel and the people that are, that are more in prison, they'll be redeemed by charity. Charity, giving charity. Simply meaning, if I learn Torah, me, one person learns Torah, and I give charity, I can get the whole people out of, Jewish people out of this terrible state of uh, confusion that they're in. So let's go. Ready? This is, the, by the way, what are we reading now? We're reading from a book which is called Lakute Torah. Lakute Torah. Gathered Words of Torah. This was written by the first Lubavitcher Rebbe. The first, not, it was Chabad Rebbe. This is before they moved into Lubavitch. The first Chabad Rebbe, his name was Rabbi Schneer Zalman. He founded the whole Chabad movement and the whole Chabad, how do you say, way of explaining the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov. <clears throat> so here we go. 
The last words in this week's Haftorah. In Ekativ, it is written, We say in Shema Yisrael, <coughs> that's also in this book of Deuteronomy. It says, <coughs> These words, <coughs> This refers to every day. Okay, what is, what is this, by the way? This, from, this is from, we say Shema Yisrael. A Jew has a commandment to say, twice a day, a commandment to say twice a day <coughs> this sentence <coughs> in the Torah, which is called Shema Yisrael. Huh? Shema Yisrael. It's written in, in Parshat Et Hanan. It's a whole paragraph. And it, the, big paragraph, the sentence begins like this. Listen, Jews. Shema means better. Understand. Understand, Jews. God is our God. God is one. <coughs> you should love God with all your heart with all your soul and all of your might. And it should be, here we are, this, and it should be, these words that I command you today should be on your heart. That's what it says. Good, we do say this twice a day. Actually, we say it more, but say it's supposed to say before you go to bed also, you say it early in the morning. <clears throat> okay, so it says, these words that I command you today, they should be, that I command you today. What is today? Today means now, today. Right now, every single day. Because in your day, what do you mean? This sentence was said by Moses 3,300, whatever it is, years ago. I guess 3,290 years ago, something like that. Right before the Jews went into Egypt. <laughs> Wait before the Jews got, went into Israel. Right? They got out of Israel, e Egypt. Let's get this straight. The Jews got out of Egypt 3,334 years ago. And they wandered around in the desert for 40 years. So subtract 40 from 3,334. So you get <clears throat> 3,290 something or 80 something. So Moses said this over 3,000 years ago. This sentence. It says, no, they didn't say it 3,000 years ago. They didn't only say it. He said it right now. Moses said these words right now. He's saying them right now. Does that make any sense? Well, not, not really. It doesn't make sense at all. Well, the fact is that Moses did not say these words. He didn't say the words. These words were said by God. And God is eternal. And God just revealed them back then. But really, he's saying it all the time. He revealed it through Moses. So these are words of God. God is eternal. These words are constant. That's what it means. Because your, the Torah should be in your eyes brand new all the time. Just like you are brand new. Huh? People, they look at the world, they're not brand new. They get depressed. They get all sorts of crazy things. Join us all sorts of cults or religions or whatever. The world has to be brand new all the time. You're being created brand new every second, every instant, every milli, whatever it is, Mig, mini, milli, instant. You're being created. Time is created. Time is a creation. We don't live within time. Time is being created just like we're being created. The whole this makes this is no makes no sense. But that's the message of the Jews. God is creating you and me. That's right. The problem is we just don't see. That's why we're learning Hasidut here in order to give us a little understanding to make us free. Yeah, how's that? So that's what we're learning. It has to be brand new in your eyes all the time, the Torah, the world. Ah, but how can you do this, Yekain, right? It's so easy to say. Let's see you do it. I mean, what, what does it mean the Torah is supposed to be brand new? <clears throat> all the time. How can it be brand new? Let's see. We, we, it means you have to feel that God is giving you the Torah all the time. You have to feel this. You can't, because it's true. It's not just something you make up. <clears throat> good, it's true, it's fact, that's good, it's eternal, but good. How do you do it? How are you supposed to do it? You, when we can understand how you do it, that's why Hasidut Chabad came to the world. Exactly that, exactly that reason. 
to feel the freshness, the novelty of the Torah. So in the Mashiach, there's going to be a new Torah. What does it mean, new Torah? We're going to feel exactly this, that the Torah is brand new all the time. We're going to feel the fact that it's new. It's always new. We can understand by preceding, the whole purpose of the soul. Coming down from above, she you sham mikodem that the soul was there before the six days of creation. He malachim the angels, angels were created in my sabrashis. They were created in the creation of the world. Baruch pi with God's mouth. Yeshua, some people say, when were the angels created? And look at the beginning in the book of Bereshit. Doesn't say anything about angels over there. It says God created the heavens and the earth, and He created the. The, 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 the sun and the moon and the fish and the, the animals and the plants and this but this is anywhere that he created angels <clears throat> this, is, this is written in the midrash some people say that the angels were created on the second day on the second day when god separated the waters upper waters that's what the angels yes some people say the that angels were created on the fifth day ophio faith when it says that the birds should fly that's the angels Oh, that's Mechoyal, the angel Mechoyal. It's hinted at. That's talking about the angels and the world, but the souls. They were drawn down from God's thought. They are before the six days of creation. Let's make this a little bit bigger here. Uh, why not make it big? <clears throat> The angels, they were created, the, the Jews, the souls, the souls, they were created before the angels. Kodem Sheshem priest. they were created before the world was created. Kaumar, like it says, Ben Mi Nimlach, who did God consult with to make this, the world? Ben Nishmoteim Shal Tzadikim, with the souls of the Tzadikim. The Lord Tzadikim, not just the Jews that actually became Tzadikim, Tzadik as a person. That he always feels that he's being created by God. And he always feels that everything is being created by God. And he feels the holiness of the Torah. The Torah is the only way that we can, how do you say, integrate ourselves with the Creator. And do what the Creator wants, the Torah. That's a tzaddik. He feels this. So it says, God, before he made the world, he consulted with the tzaddikim. Not, the, not just the tzaddikim, not just the righteous Jews that really <coughs> activated this ability in their souls to be connected to God constantly, aware of God. Like it says, like it says, <clears throat> your people, all the Jews are tzaddikim. All of the Jews want to do what God wants, and even more. Every Jew, even if he doesn't know that he's a Jew, down deep, he cannot go against what God wants. He can't do it. It's impossible. Unless he goes crazy. Just like a normal person cannot cut off his own hand, right? Take, a, take as many people as you want to. Take you know the whole world's population, 9 billion people. Give everybody knives and say, okay, everyone, now let's everyone cut off your foot. Huh? Why isn't anybody following orders? Come on, let's go. Cut off that foot there. Just stick that old foot out and just cut up. Don't worry about the knife. It's really sharp. I guarantee you no one's going to do it. No one will <laughs> cut off their foot. What are you going to cut off your foot for? <laughs> That's just totally insane. That, well, it's more insane to go against what God wants. More insane to, to cut yourself off even temporarily, to go against what God, God creates your foot. right? If your foot is valuable to you, how much more so your connection to God? God is... A tzaddik is a person that feels this connection. <clears throat> Every Jew in his nature is a tzaddik in his essence. The problem is, is they either they don't know or they're temporarily insane or whatever. Ridasam, Baguf, and the coming down in the body is Latsarah Aliyah. Why did God put the soul into the body where here we can do all sorts of sins and have all sorts of doubts and, and it feels good to have to do sins. It feels good to have sins to do good. And the doubts that just takes away a little bit of guilt that might wreck up our fun. Huh? Well, fun. What do you, we have doubts if God exists? He just doesn't exist. That's all. Do whatever you want. Which is basically what's happening in the world now. <clears throat> so every Jew already feels it. So it's no problem, right? You can feel that God is created. That's what the Jews are here for. The Jews are here to show everyone what human beings are supposed to do. They're supposed to feel God and act accordingly. What happens when you feel God? 
then you feel that you're happy that God is creating you. Everyone is different to use all of your potential to make this world a better place. How do you do this? Let's understand. Let's understand this idea. It says that so the soul comes into the body to do this. Why does the soul come into the body? The tzurich aliyah, in order to, that the soul should be elevated. Huh? The soul before it was put into the body, it was one with God. It was higher than the angels. Why does God put it into the world so that it can get even higher than that? What's that higher than that? What's that now? Now going to heaven, heaven is just a creation. That's where the angels are. And the soul before it came to the world was higher than heaven. Eh, heaven is just like a, a, a nothing. Huh? Heaven is like nothing. It's like a you know a professor in physics or something watching kids play in the sand. Or something. Come to, how would you like to play in the sand? Leave me alone. What are you talking about? The same thing, playing, playing, going to heaven is like playing in a sandbox. What is it for the soul? The, 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 the heaven is like nothing. So if so, the soul was above heaven, came into the world. Came into the world, why? It was higher than heavens. Leave it up there. It's not came into the world to get an a, elevation. The soul becomes higher. How can it become higher than if it existed before the world? There was no higher and lower. <clears throat> High and low is only something that came when the world was created. How can it be? What's going to be? I don't understand. The soul comes into the body. Terrible. The, the world is the, is the lowest of the low. The world, this physical world, is lower than hell. In hell, at least you know that there's God. In this world, you think that you're God. In this world, you think you can do whatever you want. You miss the whole point of be, of gratitude to the Creator. It says that don't worry about it. God put us in this physical world, tremendous descent, <clears throat> lowest of the lows, in order that we can get an elevation. We'll be even higher than before we were created. How can that be? Before we were created, we were higher than heaven, higher than the angels. Well, to understand in Aliyah, we have to understand what is this elevation. since Shagam without this elevation. All of them, the Jewish people before they came into the world, they were, it says, in the, in the top of God's thought. The world with all the angels, with all the heavens, with all this, that's created from God's word. The Jewish people were in God's thought. Why did he put us into this world? Why? In a Yishlomar, we can say, they used to have, and first of all, we have to understand, Pirush, the meaning of this prayer that we say in the morning. <clears throat> Every religious Jew says this prayer in the morning. It's part of the prayer book. What does it say? Neshama shenatata bitaorei. The soul that you neshama shenatata that you put inside of me is pure. But that's what we say. Neshama shenatata bitaorei ata barata ata yatsarta ata nafachta biata yatsarta. says the soul that you gave me is pure. You created it. You formed it. You blew it inside of me. <clears throat> this is the beginning of our prayers. <clears throat> God called him even before there's the prayer called Asher Yatsar. It ends up we don't say it that way, but okay. Kamosh, like it says in the Gomorrah, in the end of Bracha, Daf Samach the 60th page <coughs> of the Talmud Bracha. He sins, though it says over there in the Talmud, Ki mit'er, when a person with the Aramaic, when you wake up, a person wakes up from his sleep. Omer, you could say, Oh, you say the soul, God, the soul that you put inside of me. Tahori, it is pure. Oh, and this is we just said that. Perush, what is it? Okay, what does it mean to the soul before you put it into me? God, it was pure. God, before you put the soul into me, it was pure. Tahori, it was pure. It comes from what's called the upper purity. And then afterwards it says, Afterwards, God, you brought this my soul into the level of Bria. Namely, something from nothing. Bria means something from nothing. Yatsarta, and this is, you blew it into me. The soul that I've got, God, it started off, it was totally pure. And this level was called the upper purity. Before any division, before any heavens, before any word, before you spoke. That's where the soul is. 
Uh, just another thing is that God is creating the world all the time. So this that God spoke in the six days of creation, he's really, that those words are before the world. So the words are not within time. The words that God spoke, let there be light, let there be this, those words <clears throat> are the, the words from which time and world and spirit were created. So it says the Torah was above these words. It was in God's thought, the, the, the soul. The soul was above these words. The soul was, the Jewish soul was above these words. The soul was in God's thought. Why did God put the, so leave it up there. What do you have to put it into the world for? Why? God put it into the world in order to improve the world. We'll see. And not only that the soul gets, not only that, but the soul gets an elevation. Let's see. That's his lapsus and ashama. That means when God blew it into me, God, like, like he did to Adam, the first man. The first man, Adam, was supposed to be a Jew. His whole life was just supposed to be serving the creator. That's what a Jew is supposed to be. He's lapsus and ashama, but Tokyo's. Serving the Creator, by the way, doesn't mean that you get all spaced out and live live in a mountain or something. You don't eat for the rest of your life, but you just eyes are glowing and you're you're whatever it is, you're the halo is around your head floating. That's not what it means. It means you're a person just like everybody else, but you do exactly what God wants in your business and your dealings with other people and everything. <clears throat> okay, so the soul comes into the body. But Tokyo has to go from the inside, inside of the body. La it becomes unified, identified with the body. And God, you also, Mishamra Bikirbi, this is part of the prayer. You also preserve the soul, that it shouldn't come out of the body. Or in so, so also the infinite light of God. So they call him that surrounds all the worlds. Umamali call him and fills all the worlds. <clears throat> It's not like a level, this aspect of God that surrounds the worlds. It's not like a level of godliness which surrounds all the worlds, like the sphere of consciousness or something like that. Sphere of spirituality above. When we say that God surrounds the worlds, it means <coughs> he defies all definition. Worlds are like definition, limit. God defies all limit. He's not limited even to being unlimited. This is the aspect of God that's found everywhere. Humamale, he, he fills up everything equally. If you want to maybe, because this is existence. The fact that everything exists, that comes from the essence of God. Not how it exists, not what form it takes, right? Angels exist, rocks exist. All that's godliness. It's the same aspect of godliness. So we've called it. Like the enclothing of life in the creation and this aspect of God, which is called Soviv Kololmim, this is like, so to speak, God's essence. That God wants there to be a world. And God wants there to be a soul in the body. That's Everything is here because God wants it to be here. This is God's will manifested. What is God's will manifested? Everything. The streets you walk on, the shoes you put on, everything in the world, all the atoms, all the planets, they're all equal. They're all God's will. Shmira. And God keeps the soul in the body so that it shouldn't stop. He calls all the time that the soul is inside of me. I am grateful to you, God. Oh. That each and every person, even though that God is infinitely, infinitely, I want to call it distant, from any comprehension that we what we have of what existence is, God is so infinitely, infinitely real. And we are so infinitely, infinitely not real, right? We're just a creation, a level which comes from a level of a level. But nevertheless, on the other hand, God is doing this whole business. He's con He's creating us. He is creating this not reality or whatever you want to call it. It's us. And if so, then we're real. God is creating us. That there, there. If you don't understand this, and you're not a, a uh, how do you say, uh, a big tzaddik or someone that realizes that it's impossible to understand, you think you can't understand it. So what we have, we have, how can we connect to God? God is so infinitely incomprehensible. So we have hodaya, surrender. <clears throat> each and every one, can give 
praise and thanks to God. That's, by the way, the word Yehudi. Yehudi means one who teaches or gives and teaches others to give thanks to the Creator. Don't thank some person or some spirit or whatever. Your goal should not be to go to heaven or whatever. That's God's business. Let him take you to heaven, whatever. Your business while you're here is to be, give thanks to God who created this whole entire, who's creating this whole thing. But afterwards, after you give thanks, the Jewish people cannot suffice with this alone. You have to make blessings. So we have two things, giving thanks to God and blessing God. What does it mean, blessing God? This is higher than giving thanks. And giving thanks means that you're grateful. Making a blessing means that you use things, you do things, right? You're walking around all day saying, thank you, God. Thank you for creating me. You tell your parents, thank you, my parents, you brought me up. Thank you. Thank you. Go to your teachers. Thank you. I'm so thankful. That's a... Finally, your parents and your teachers and everybody say, hey, listen, uh, okay, enough already. You've been thanking me and thanking me and thanking me for 25 years. Thank you. I'm so... Okay, stop one second. Maybe do something that someone else will thank you. Do something positive, right? Make, make a little bit of change in the world. Oh, thank you for this advice. Thank you. Just give a slap. Say, wake up. Get out of it. Start doing something. Work. Do something in the world. Make blessings. That's the idea. There is thanks, being grateful to God. That's wonderful. But that's only half of the picture. Maybe it's only 10% of the picture. Maybe it's even 1% of the picture. The rest is we have to make blessings. And what is that blessings? Blessings means that we actually change the world and make God more revealed here in his creation, the creator in his creation. To, the creator will be revealed in his creation. And there was to show everyone and everything that God really wants us to be here. He cares about us. We're tremendously important. Every moment is important. Every moment is godly. That's called making a blessing to draw down the awareness of God in this world, to change the world the way God wants. God put us here to change the world. Well, to understand this. What is this? Giving thanks. It says that another time he uses this word modim. Modim means also surrender. Surrender. It says that the why that the rabbis, the great rabbis, they were moted, they surrendered their opinion to Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir, he was Rabbi Meir was one of the pupils of Rabbi Akiva. It says Rabbi Meir, his mind was so deep that no one could understand what he was talking about. You couldn't understand. Everybody knew he was right, but you, they couldn't figure out the reason. And when he would explain it, they wouldn't understand the reason. But they knew he was right. He wasn't just speaking. He wasn't just speaking, you know, the stream of consciousness. He was <clears throat> the fee because yeah. So we have to surrender our opinion. We have to sur that's what it means giving thanks. I'm so grateful to you. I'm grateful to you. I need you. You're greater than me. Right? That's, that's what it means, gratitude. You're greater than me. You gave me something I couldn't do on my own. And also the word modim also means to be surrendered. Like it says, the, the wise men, the rabbis, they were all surrendered to Rabbi Meir. Why? Because they didn't agree with him. They didn't agree with him, but afterwards they had to say, okay, we realize you've proved to us that we're wrong. We don't understand what you're saying, but okay, so we surrender our opinion to you. How can we say this by God, that we don't agree with you and now we do agree? We're, have, we're having an argument with God? It says, the Rebbe says, let me explain this whole business. Listen. Ki anu mata. We people that live here in the world, we say Shabriya that the creation who yesh mi'ayin. We say that we really exist and that God is nothing. <laughs> that the heavens and all the creation, they are real. That's a double yesh, that's a real thing. <laughs> that we can see. <laughs> that which is above, that with the creator, God, who <laughs> ayin is nothing. 
and religious people believe in God. Although it's low, but by God, it's exactly the opposite. God is the real reality. He is absolutely true. Masha near the and what appears to us that it really does exist. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm reading this wrong. Oh, well, it's low, but by God, who min masha near but by God, it's exactly the opposite of what it appears to us. Ki kula kame, because everything in front of God is like nothing. But call mashalamata and everything that's below, who yoter kalo is like more nothing. Okay, ayan. And God is God is the true reality. See, we, we, we got a problem with it. When God creates the world, so he creates the world in a way that the world feels that it's really real. And that's why God wants it. We feel that we are really real, and we feel that we are really real. I feel that I'm a reality to the exclusion of God, and even eventually to the exclusion of everybody else. Right? Life is a dream. There's some people that say life is just in your imagination. You don't really exist. Nothing is with this, right? Everything is just whatever it is, quantum physics or something like that. Is that. Well, I mean, they've got a bit of a point because the fact of the matter is, is this world, if you really break it down to like, like atoms and energy, you come down that there's no really existence over here. It doesn't really, you know, all we're looking at is like, is like, uh, what is it called? Uh, energy patterns or magnetic waves or something like that, magnetic fields, who knows? But the fact is, if you break it down, they can't really figure out what exactly the atom is. What's the, what's the basic building block of this whole business, right? It's not matter. It's some sort of energy, but it's not, it's not exactly clear what it is, right? And they're, they're trying to like locate and they have these quarks and these stuff. So what's going on? Nevertheless, after all, despite all that, that's what we got. So all the physicists and all these people say listen this is reality why it we can't comprehend how it's really made of like all these atoms and little nothings right in this physical that's we'll explain that somehow or other and what's the truth though the truth is is that this world is a creation and all of its complications and all that's that's it's all part of the creation with the with the the the, the, the world is 10 billion years old and this it's that the fossils were created and all of these are, it's all a creation. The fact is the world was created 5,700 and what is it? 82 and a half years ago. Well, soon it's going to be 83 years ago. It was created from absolutely nothing. And it's, and it, that's, it's being created from absolutely nothing now. If the world was created from nothing, so it still is from nothing, right? It didn't. So the biggest something that we've got is something that was created from nothing. So we are all basically really nothing. But that's not what it looks like to us. To us, it looks like we are really real. And the fact is, we are really real. Why are we really real? Because we can't sense anything that's more real than we are. Even going to heaven, <clears throat> going to heaven, that's just another type of reality. Right? It's something like this, where you just move from this world to the next world. But the sense that there's a creator, we can't do it, and God wants it to be that way. In order to sense as a creator, with it, <clears throat> how do we even know that there is? So maybe the whole thing isn't. He says, well, you're right, could be. But when God gave the Torah, he revealed his essence. And in the holy temple was also revealed God's essence. What happens when you feel God's essence? When you're feeling it, you're totally negated to God. After you finish feeling it, one second later, you come back to reality. And you feel, wow, that was really something else. Right Now, looks like I'm God again. So that's what it says. The fact of the matter is, is we have to look at the world from God's point of view. Alzeh, on this we say, Morim and That's what we say, that we are surrendered to you, God. We agreed. We have an argument here, God. Me and you. I think that I'm God. You think that you're God. Who's right? I feel that I'm right. I'm sure that I'm right. <clears throat> I have facts to prove that I'm right. Here I am when I think it's me. When I do something that makes me feel good, I feel good. Okay, God, now you prove your existence. No. Let's go. Come on. Huh? See? Nothing. Nothing happened. So that shows that I am the only reality, and there is no other reality, only me. But to this we say, okay, you have an argument with God. You say that you're the only real existence, and that God doesn't really exist. 
And God says, I am the only real existence, and you don't really exist unless I create you. It's an argument. Who's right? Says, in this, we have to surrender ourselves. Because you're never going to do it by logic. He's never going to convince you. Even if God appears on Mount Sinai, and everybody's soul jumps out of, the, out of their bodies, afterwards, 40 days later, everybody worships the golden calf. They, either uh, actively, passively. <clears throat> In other words, God's never going to convince us that he is the real reality. It's just not going to happen. The only way we can do it is modim. We have to surrender ourselves. Modim, Muhammad, we have to surrender. That's a Jew, Yehudim. Listen, don't ask me why this God did this, because that's it's just that's the way it was. I, that's the way it is, right? We're in, that's the situation, right? It's like asking a, a person asking, you know, why, why do I have to eat? I don't want to eat. I don't like eating. Right? I don't, I don't want to eat. So don't eat, and you'll see soon you really won't eat, you know, you won't be in the world. That's the way that's the way the world is created. That's the way the world is created. That's why it says, Mori Manu. We have to surrender ourselves to the truth. The truth is, Kamo Shahu, like God sees it. And every single Jew, Yeshua Bechinis Hoda has this ability to surrender himself to God. Ah, but Im calls in, nevertheless, Hoda Umirachok. This giving thanks to God, this we said, this is from far away. Surrendering yourself to God, that's only half of the picture. A full quarter of the picture, 10%, 1%. It has to be there. But this is connecting yourself to the essence of God that you realize that, listen, I'm not going to be able to really comprehend the essence of God, but I have to try. It's a commandment to try. Shema Yisrael, Shema means to understand. The Hainu, Shabbatzmo, we are when, when, so from far away from God. What do we do? We give thanks. I myself am not next to God. Shai Moda that I agreed to him. Like the like the wise men, the rabbis agreed to Rabbi Meir. They didn't reach his level of understanding. They didn't understand it, but they just understood that their way of looking at the world is wrong, and that his way was right. The same thing is we have to surrender our opinion to that of God. This is like called faith. Another word for this faith, emuna. This is like a crown that surrounds our mind. Therefore, Ganva famous, brought by Hasid all the time. It says, Ganva, a thief, at the mouth of this tunnel that he dug to rob someone. Rachmanakar, he calls to God for help. He believes in God. That's a thief. He believes in God. He has total faith in God. Total faith in God. He believes in God. But on the other hand, he needs money. And he has a good quality. He's, he's got a good talent for stealing. Not everybody can be a thief. You have to be brave. You have to be quick. And he has a good quality. He has a good ability to be a thief. He, it's, it's natural to him. And it just happens to be that he needs money. And it happens to be that he discovered that in this bank or whatever it is, in this old man's house, there's a lot of money. And he digs a tunnel to get in the guy's house. But it's a little bit shaky. Because maybe the guy has a gun. Maybe he's not. I thought he wasn't at home. But maybe there's an alarm system. So what does the thief do before he goes to steal? He prays. God, please help me to make this thief. But God doesn't want you to steal. Okay, listen, that's a different. But I believe in God. I'm praying to God. I believe in God's ability. And it must be that God answers some of these people. Because the thieves, there are thieves that succeed. Jewish thieves also. Avobad, bracha. That's called hoda, surrender, thanks. But afterwards, there has to be a blessing. A blessing, oh, gilo, this is revelation. Come on, Yishmael, banid, barakheni. And says that there was Yishmael, Kohen Gadol, the high priest, his name was Yishmael. And he went, went into the Holy Temple, he went into the Holy of Holies on pass, on, 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 on Yom Kippur. A voice would come out and God would say, give me a blessing. God would say to him, give me a blessing. Also we say, blessed be God from the world to the world. That he's drawn from the world, which is concealed, the upper worlds, until this physical world. Right? The angels, over in this world, we're crazy about money. We're crazy about ourselves. The angels are crazy about God. The angels are crazy about God. The angels feel 
some aspect of godliness, but at least the angels feel that they're being created. That's what's called alma discasio, the concealed worlds. So we want to bless God, means we want to draw down the revelation of God, that it should be like it is in the concealed world. It should be ad alma discalia, this physical world. That's what a blessing means. How do we bless God? How do we reveal God in this world? By means of the Torah. By means of saying the words of Torah, that's the sentence right after in Shema Yisrael. It says, these words should be in your mouth by means of the words of the Torah, by means of the commandments. And the Torah, we draw down godliness into the world in our, on our soul. Okay. Umitchila, in the beginning, Matchila, first of all, how do we draw godliness down? Torah, commandments. Once again, Jews are doing Torah commandments. We don't see God being drawn down into the world. We don't see the holy temple. There was a revelation you'd feel godliness. Okay, that was, you'd feel, you go to the holy temple, you feel that you're being created. You feel the whole world is a creation. But nowadays, we do that by learning Torah and doing the commandments. I don't understand. I do Torah book commandments. I, I, you feel God? I don't know. Says the Rebbe, one second. We, the, the, I, we sort of changed. I sort of jumped the gun over here. Yes, but mitchila, first of all, you have to have love. It's like saying you, you want to you have a car. You want to buy a car, so you buy a car. And you, the, the, you get a car, you take it home, right? They, they bring it to your house. And you call up the, the, the company and say, I don't understand. I bought this car. I paid you know, $50,000 for the car. And the thing doesn't work. It doesn't move. I got places to go. I got what? It doesn't work. It says, what do you mean it doesn't work? It says, did you put the key in? What talking about? What, what key? What was the key? Uh, you got to turn the thing on. You got to turn it on. Uh, okay, look in the back. You gotta, okay, turn it on. Good. All right, it doesn't work. Did you put gas in it? No, I didn't put any gas. You got to put gas in the car. You have to put gas in the car first, and you have to turn it on, right? And then, but you, why didn't you? But I did put gas in it. Maybe your wife, my, yeah, my wife drove it. That's right. She drove it around for a while. And then so it must have run out of gas. I got to put gas in it. The same thing with Torah and the commandments. You have to have gas, and you have to turn it on. The gas, in this case, is love. Turning it on means using your free will, thinking about it. We'll talk about that. Let's go. But first of all, if you want to draw God, you want to make a blessing to God. Surrendering yourself to God, that's the way you can connect yourself to the fact that there is such a thing as a creator. But afterwards, you have to make the creator revealed in the world. How do you do that? Torah and the commandments. But in order for commandments to work, Torah and the commandments to work, you have to have gas. What's the gas? Love. You have to love God. How do you love God? We'll talk about that. But you have the web, that's by means of thinking. Shema means to think. It's a commandment to think about God. Using your mind. That's why we're here. To use your mind. Animals don't use their minds. Animals don't use their mind. The animals can't relate to anything that's not in the physical world. Right? Anything in this physical world, don't relate to it. We have to relate to God. How do you do that? We have to not just relate to it. We have to love God. Love. Love means love. doesn't mean faking it. It's to actually value, feel the preciousness of God, that he's creating us, feel it, and love God. By means of this, then afterwards, when we have Shemona Esrei, in the Shemona Esrei, when we pray the, the, the prayers that we make every day, then we can have brachos, then we can draw down godliness. And so if so, between this level of surrender to God, Brach hoda surrender, and this thing of blessing God, there has to be the connector between them that is loving God. How are you going to come to this love of God? Tune in tomorrow and find out. Now we're going to learn this, this wonderful, beautiful speech of the Lubavitcher Rebbe that he said in 1991 when the uh, holiday of Tisha B'av, the fast day of Tisha B'av, it's also a holiday actually, Koromoed, it's called, uh, of Tisha B'av fell on Shabbat, just like on this year. And of course, if Tisha B'av falls on Shabbat, we do not fast. What does this mean? Well, let's see. Just keep tuned in. Don't, don't turn, don't leave us. <laughs>